All right, so I thought I'd do a quick word on um, OS X Lion. I had like five days to try it out and uh, ended up going back to Snow Leopard. My, um, I had a MacBook Pro, I have a MacBook Pro from early 2011. Uh, so it actually came with Snow Leopard, so I'm able to go back. Um, if you purchased a computer and it came with Snow Leopard, you can reinstall Snow Leopard. Um, you can always go back to the uh, earliest software your computer came with. Um, and I've actually been on OS X for, mm, it's been seven years. Yeah, seven years, six or seven years. Sounds about right. Um, I got my first OSX computer was an iBook with, I think it came with Panther 10.3. Um, so I've been on o with OSX for a long time, um, since the G4 days. So yeah, I this was the first real iteration of OSX that when I upgraded, I thought they may have gotten this wrong. Um, and part of the problem is, is that I think this is really the first release where I've seen step backs in usability. Um, the Finder, for instance, the Finder in Snow Leopard is, is great. Um, there's color that lets you easily see, um, you know, where are your hard disks and what's a, where's a flash drive plugged in? Um, in Lion, it's all gray. All the Finder icons are gray. You have to rely on text, and you can kind of see the graphics. Um, but the thing is, it, it's not a step forward. Um, they've actually made it worse. It, it's it's better when there's some color there. It's I'm a visual person. I like being able to look really quickly um, and kind of find what I need. And I don't like... Um, Throughout this, I'll tell you ways to improve Lion. Uh, so if you open up the Finder, you no longer see how much hard drive space you have left, um, which is great, maybe, if you have you know, a new MacBook with a stock hard drive, you've got 500 gigs of space, you don't care how much free space you have. Um, if you're like me and you're running an aftermarket SSD with 128 gigs, um, you probably don't have a whole lot of free space. You want to keep a easy tabs on it. Um, in Lion, it's hidden. Uh, so if you open the Finder, go to View, and then click Status Bar, that will show you how much, you know, the number of items you have in a folder and the amount of free space you have left. Um, also, you don't, by default, get to even see where your hard drive is, your, your internal hard drive. Uh, so to get to that, I think you click Finder, View, no, Finder, maybe Go To. I think it's like Command Shift C. Um, and that takes you to your computer. So it'll say, like, it would say, like, Matt's MacBook Pro. And then you can drag your hard drive into the site icon. Because um, sometimes, especially if you're a tinker, you need to get to a library file or a preferences file and maybe delete something or edit something. Um, so Apple seems to kind of, you know, have taken a step back in Finder functionality, which is disappointing. Also, in um, the latest version of OS X, you don't get Rosetta uh, capability. And Rosetta was a built-in um, transition piece of software that lets you run older um, PowerPC software. Um, but I remember running into a few plugins that still needed Rosetta, so, you know, it seems as though they've taken stuff out without putting, uh, you know, added functionality back in. Um, another thing is QuickTime. I use QuickTime to edit some videos. Um, it's a really, QuickTime and Snow Leopard is a really easy way to edit videos quickly, trim them, uh, and then save them directly as a movie file. Um, say the video clip that you were editing had... Uh, was encoded in DivX. Um, if you download videos online, they're usually encoded in DivX. Um, so you would, would download Perean, uh, and then you could edit those quickly in QuickTime, and then save the clip as a uh, movie file, a .mov file. 
now in QuickTime in Lion, whenever you, you don't have a, you don't have the ability to save anymore. So if you open a clip in QuickTime, edit it. Uh, the only way to then get that video out is to export it. I've got a quad core Mac Pro, and even editing, you know, two or three QuickTime clips at a time, it it was taking forever. Um, especially if you're going to then import those clips into, uh, say, iMovie, and then have to re-encode them again. It just doesn't make sense. Um, you know, it's I don't see what's gained out of that. Um, you know, in the old version, you could save or you could export. So they've really just taken, uh, you know, an option away from you, which doesn't make sense. Um, and that's really kind of what's going on at Apple right now. I think they're trying to push uh, sort of maybe an easier consumer uh, approach. And what they're doing is they're taking out functionality that uh, some of us advanced users and even professionals have relied on for a while uh, to easily get things done. And whenever you you change something that affects somebody's workflow, we get angry, uh, we get frustrated. You saw a similar thing when they released the new version of Final Cut um, on the App Store. And, you know, they kind of build it as this great new revolutionary way to do things. And what, uh, you know, enthusiasts and professional videographers found was that they, some things were incredibly easier, but they'd taken out some things and made others, you know, you have to jump through all these loops and, you know, it just really didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, another thing that I don't like about Lion is the resume function. I thought it'd be super cool, you know, how cool would it be to be able to, uh, you know, pick up exactly where you left off? In reality, it doesn't work consistently. Um, I was trying to show it, uh, a family member just bought a, uh, well, one of my moms just bought a uh, MacBook Pro, or yeah, a MacBook Pro, a little 13 inch MacBook Pro. And I was trying to show her Resume, and so I opened a couple of tabs in Safari, closed it, brought it back up, it worked perfectly. Uh, did the same thing again, and it didn't work. Um, and, you know, I, I also, I like the idea that once you've closed a program, it's closed. You're not worrying about, um, you know, it opening and springing up five windows that you're like, I thought I closed that, like QuickTime. The only way to actually close windows in QuickTime was to individually uh, Command W, each open window, and then that way when you opened it up, it wouldn't come back. Thankfully, I found out as I was downgrading that that can be changed in system preferences under general. You can unclick at the very bottom. It's a little preference that says something like, I don't know, save windows or something like that. It, it, it's pretty clear once you open it up. Um, but it's one of those things that, you know, I'm not sure. It, it may have sounded great, but I think if they had, you know, surveyed... Uh, you know, beta testers and maybe sought more feedback from developers that kind of would have thought, mm. I would maybe like to see it be like a program by program, be able to, you know, go into the preferences. I think it would be great in something like Pages, where you open it up and it's got, you know, the two documents you had open last. I think that would be nice. Um, but in having to choose either on or off for everything, I would choose off. I think it's more predictable to just have. I closed out the program, it's done. Um, so those are some of the problems with OSX Lion. I also didn't like that um, they didn't release it on physical media. They're going to be, I guess, next month, I think either August or September, be releasing it on a USB drive, which is good, although they're charging $69 versus $29. Um, so they're basically charging you 40 bucks for what's probably an eight gigabyte flash drive. Um, they're really trying to discourage people from it. Um, but the only way to get a clean install of Lion is to use either a USB drive or there are instructions posted on the net for uh, being able to turn a USB drive or a uh, burning it to a DVD. That way you can get a clean install. Um, I like clean installs. I don't know why you would... I know some people just have, they're like, oh, I have too many programs and too many settings. I don't want to have to set it all up again. I live... I live most of my digital life in a way that um, 
you know, I can easily re-download like four or five programs, um, like Perian, Flip for Mac, um, App Trap. I don't, I don't know, I'm not a whole lot of frills, so I, I'd rather have a clean system with a whole new preferences library uh, than to worry about bringing something over that's going to possibly conflict. But um, my next video is going to be about some of Apple's hardware. So that's it for OS X5.